welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Rob Klingberg, your host. Um, today, out in the garage to uh, talk to you a little bit about our recent uh, flight testing experiences at El Mirage. Uh, it was a very exciting day. Some things went well. Some other things were a little challenging. Uh, we've discovered that there's probably an issue with flow separation on the elevons when they're deflected down. Uh, I've done some uh, quickie tests in the meantime, believe that we have a solution, and I'm making a whole set of videos to tell you about those flight tests and the upcoming fixes or upgrades. Uh, take your pick. Yeah. Now, as you may recall, in the past we towed just from the nose here, right up here, and discovered there was quite a nose down pitchy moment on the glider, even with full stick, uh, full back stick, I could barely get the nose up off the ground. Uh, it was quite challenging. Then we switched to this uh, Y bridle type setup here that uh, uh, my buddy Bob set up. And uh, we did some hand towing tests with me running along. and That seemed much better. So we're going to use this again on our most recent tests. And we got it set up. We get out there. And uh, you're going to see a video here in a moment of a little ground run where we take it up to just shy of uh, takeoff speed. Now, from the uh, test hops at Marina, we know that it takes off about 23 miles an hour. So we decided to do a ground run up to 20 miles an hour. I'd hold the nose down on the ground uh, until we were up to speed. And then I'd ease the stick back and see if I could lift the nose and keep the nose balanced or steady at a given angle of attack as we rolled across the uh, dry lake bed. And I found it to be quite challenging. Uh, once the nose came up, it popped up, went back down, banged into the ground, back up again, down, up, down. I, and the second run that we made, uh, I, I was a little bit better at holding it steady, but I should actually be able to lift off the nose and just park it at one spot and hold it right there. Uh, you should be able to do that with just about any aircraft. So we had some sensitivities in the system uh, that made it very difficult for me to do that. Um, although I was able to do it well enough that we could continue with the flight test. And I think two problems were occurring, and, and uh, they're both quite interesting. Uh, one of them has to do with the Y bridle, and, and I'm gonna cut across the frame here so that you can see how this is set up. Let's see, I'm out of frame, but I'm over here. <laughs> you can see the, the, the ropes here. We got two that go down this way, one that goes up this way, and when you pull the release, this guy comes down this way, goes through the ring, back here, through this loop, and down and out. And then you're off toe. And the idea behind this type of setup is that, so as the angle of attack changes, if you're really nose down, this comes slides up like this, and you're still towing through the CG. And if the nose goes up high, it comes down here like this, and you're still pulling through the CG. And that keeps it from... Uh, preventing the glider from pitching up or down significantly. But what we see in the video is when I lift the nose off the ground, this pretty much stays right here. It, it doesn't come up, doesn't go down. It stays in one spot. But this portion of the rope, the forward portion, goes down at an angle like this. So this is here and this rope's pulling me down. So I get the nose off the ground. It was, it was essentially straight like this. We're a little out of frame. Uh, it was essentially straightforward. And then as I lifted the nose, this would come up like this. And then we'd have a downward force uh, going up to the hitch on the truck. So as soon as I would get the front wheel off the ground, boom, it wanted to come right back down again. So maybe this isn't working quite as expected. And then you'll see in the video that I'm rolling along and I call for release, release, release. And then, I, then you hear me say, I can't release, I can't release. And strangely enough, the release here, the pin came out, but didn't actually release. And it was a bit perplexing at first. Like, how does that happen? And, and I'll, I'll show you here. And I hope you can see this. So you, it's a three ring circus type release. And you pull this out. And what would happen is this would come up like this. But there wasn't enough pull on the rope, and it would actually hang up in part of the process here. Now, this only takes about five pounds to pull this out, five, seven pounds, and then it goes. Well, that's not very much force. And what we ended up doing was just doing a, a two-ring circus. We ran one of these through, and then this up through here, 
and then back down and put the pin in. And with a one ring circuit or two ring circuits like this, instead of three, we got a solid release every time. Well, that meant that the loads up here were quite low. So all the loads are down here. And we were pulling with all the force, 10, 15, 20 pounds of force, maybe more with the wheels. Um, so, interesting. And what happened when we actually got it off the ground, pulled the nose up and started flying it up, oh, the first flight, and I'm hooked in at the CG that I used at Marina, which worked well there, full forward stick. Took me full forward stick just to hold the nose down. So with all the force being applied down here, well, this isn't going through the CG because the CG is actually up in here somewhere, somewhere around my carabiners where I'm hooked in, uh, somewhere mid-chest because we've got 115 pounds up here. We've got the, the, the fatty pilot down here that weighs 200 pounds, and his CG is down here. So the, the CG is somewhere, yeah, just about the carabiners where I hook in, which is right about here, not down here. So if we got all of the force down here, that's causing quite a nose-up pitch for me. So we moved me one notch forward, and that compensated for at least half of it. And on the second flight, I only needed half forward stick. Uh, the whole, you'll see in those upcoming videos later on that um, because we're starting out with so much down stick, I'm holding the nose down on the ground, so I got good nose wheel steering. Uh, and it was a little bit out of trim, wanted to roll right, uh, excuse me, wanted to roll left. And I have to put in right aileron. So right aileron is left elevon down, left elevon down, and I need forward stick to hold the nose on the ground till we're up to speed, so that's even more. So I have a lot of down elevon on the left side, and the flow is separating uh, off of the elevon. Uh, the elevon is not fully effective. So it was probably happening when we just did the ground toes also, where I'm holding the nose on the ground, so I've got good steering, and the flow is separating off the elevons, and when I ease the stick back to lift the nose up, all oh, the flow reattaches, and then I get appropriate control forces, and the nose pops up like this, it overshoots, so I feed in down quickly, flow separates off the elevons, not, so it's not effective, so I feed in more down, well, I finally get the nose back down, and then I want to raise it back up again, and I overshoot, and then back down again, so it's almost like PIO, what, what it is, is it's a non-linear control system. Uh, where the flow is separating and reattaching on the elevons, and I'm having to chase that with the control stick and try to keep up with it. And it's all happening very fast. This is a matter of just split seconds of stick, 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 stick in order to keep up with it to uh, uh, prevent it from over-rotating one way or the other. And, and I was barely able to keep up with it. So uh, I think we're going to be modifying the, the towing rig here, and I'm going to set up a rope uh, that goes like this straight up and down here like this, attached at both the top and bottom. And there'll be a series of hook-in spots here where, where we can put in a D-ring. And we'll, maybe we'll have one down here, one here, one up here. Maybe we'll put them a couple of inches apart. So we have several different spots where we can tow from. And I'll have it set up so that um, the release releases the D-ring uh, from the rope here. So instead of pulling on the structure or anything like that, we'll, we'll literally pull on this rope, which is attached here and here, and that's how we'll tow the glider. Now the Swift, when they tow the Swift, I, I've never seen the Swift winch towed, but when they uh, bungee launch or uh, car tow or aero tow it, they tow from a single point. It's right about here, and uh, I'll, I'll have a hook in there. So we'll try to find the spot that's correct that has no nose up or nose down pitching moment, somewhere that passes through the overall CG of the aircraft with me in it. And uh, next time we go out towing, we're just gonna tow right from that single point and release from that single point. And hopefully we'll avoid the nose up or nose down pitching moment, such that I won't be using half of my available control just to keep the thing level and on tow. And when you're uh, on tow and it's taking full down to stay level, you got a problem. And then if you have issues with separating flow and you don't have good roll control, well, that makes you hit the release really fast and get off of tow. Uh, and, and that's what we had. You know, I wasn't on tow for very long before I went, I really don't have control of this aircraft. I don't have good solid control. Uh, I'm becoming more of a spectator than a pilot. So I'm getting off tow and getting it back on the ground until we sort it out. 
So that's our plan for Tony. Uh, stick around, watch the video here, and have some fun with me. Watch the nose hop up and down. And uh, But before we go on to that, I offer you the opportunity to look down, see the little heart-shaped thing that says thanks. Maybe we, you could send me a little bit of thanks uh, to help cover and defray some of the costs of all of this uh, testing, which gets quite expensive. So enjoy that video. I'll come back at the end and uh, let you know a little bit more about what's coming in the upcoming uh, flight test videos. Five right now. Okay. I'm showing 10. Okay, time to reconnoiter. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, that little clip of me struggling to keep the nose off the ground precisely. Uh, it was a challenge. And what's coming up in uh, the future videos that I'm working on editing and we're doing some analysis on uh, are two flights. Uh, both of them were quite short. Uh, I really don't go much higher than maybe 15 feet off the ground and fly along for 15 seconds or so. Um, and the first one wasn't too bad. Uh, I managed to uh, uh, hold enough down elevator to keep it on tow, keep the wing level. And uh, I knew I had to get off a of tow because I wasn't going to have enough control throw to maintain regular towed flight behind the truck. Uh, so I get off a of tow and get the aircraft stabilized. And it's not a bad landing. Uh, I, I didn't really flare for the landing. I came in at full speed, which isn't bad. We were probably doing 28 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, but she really rolls across that dry lake bed. It's pretty smooth. And I kind of go arcing off to the right a little. And uh, what's happening is, is that the load on the front wheel is a little too light and it's kind of skittering uh, across the little bumps that are in the lake bed. And I don't have solid uh, steering control. It's almost like sliding on black ice. Uh, I should have known to put in a lot of down elevator, just nail that nose wheel on the ground, then I would have had good steering. But uh, I was still a little freaked out by how the flight went, so I didn't have the presence of mind to do that. So I go arcing off. And we, we had it set up so that about 30 pounds of the total of 320 or so is on the front wheel. 330 pounds total, we got 30 on the front wheel, uh, which is at the minimum end of what you want for tricycle gear. Uh, so next time we go out, we'll move the main gear a little further aft and we'll get it up around 40, 45 pounds on the front wheel, and that'll probably be more appropriate. It'll take a little bit more elevator control to get it up off of the ground, uh, but when I land, it'll stay a little more firmly planted, and I'll have better steering. And then in the upcoming video of the second flight, you'll see me fly a little bit longer, a little bit higher, and uh, we'll have some split screen. You'll be able to watch from my view and uh, from the wingtip, and you'll see how challenging the flight was. I don't, we moved me forward a notch on the hang points and I only needed half down stick to keep it on tow. But uh, with all the separated flow off the elevon and me holding right stick to keep the wings level, that left elevon was way down, tons of drag, adverse yaw and a lot of drag just from separated flow. And, and you'll see the whole thing yaw way to the left. And that's when I popped the release, when I realized I'm just spectating here. I'm not really flying the aircraft. And once I got off a tow, I kind of got it straightened out, uh, but over controlled a little bit, stalled the wing, and we had an abrupt arrival back on the ground and uh, bent the axle. Uh, once again, that seems to be a favorite pastime on this aircraft. And uh, we realized we had got an issue with the control system. Believe that we have a solution in place, and that will solution will be shown as part of the second video that's coming. 
And uh, I hope you come back and watch all of that and see the solution. And you'll learn some interesting aerodynamics right along with me. Uh, we ran into some stuff that, uh, uh, despite all my years of doing this, I was not familiar with. Uh, it was a new concept uh, to me. Uh, and uh, you're never too old to learn something new. So uh, we're going back and making some changes to the elevons to eliminate the problem. And then in a few weeks here, we'll get out, we'll test again, and we'll see if it's better. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoy all the videos. Please send your thanks. Little button down below says thanks on it. Uh, any donation is uh, really, really welcome. It helps defray a lot of the costs on the testing. And if you really want to be a supporter of this project, you continue to learn all of these cool things along with me, please become a patron. Uh, go down to the description, go to the Patreon link, become a patron. And I got a great welcome package for you, full of goodies. And uh, we'll just love you to death <laughs> over in that group. Uh, you'll get all of the inside information ahead of time. And you'll get all these videos commercial free also. So uh, for a few dollars a month, uh, a lot of bangs. So come on over and sign up. Uh, love to have you. And as I always say, fly safe and bye for now.